Kingdom Come Deliverance Five years ago, an unknown dev studio from the Czech Republic took the RPG world by surprise and released a medieval RPG that should be the gold standard for many years to come. Until today, the game has sold more than 5 million copies and accumulated a massive fanbase all over the world. The great news is that it is pretty certain at this point that Warhurst Studio is working on Kingdom Come 2. There have been lots of hints and leaks throughout the past years. The most recent one is from an Embracer Group presentation, the company that owns the studio that made Kingdom Come Deliverance. In that presentation, they had a slide that states a sequel to a Warhorse game, which can only be Kingdom Come 2, as Kingdom Come Deliverance is the only game the studio has ever developed. So in this video I wanna talk about how well Kingdom Come Deliverance holds up in 2023 and what could be improved upon in a sequel. So let's jump right into it. When I played Kingdom Come Deliverance on release for the first time, I remember I saw the opening cinematic where Henry's parents got killed at the Scarlet's Raid and thought this is gonna be the most generic story ever. Parents getting killed by a bad guy? Main protagonist must become strong to revenge his parents. But the story turned out to actually be pretty good. Embedded in a historical accurate setting, the game manages to create a questline with interesting characters and versatile tasks that most of the time can be approached in different ways. The best thing about Kingdom Come, however, is not the story, but the whole presentation, the open world in which the story takes place. Warhorse Studio managed to create an immersive medieval world that nothing has ever come close to within the past five years. It just invites you to take a step back from the main quest and explore the open world. The RPG factor is big and there are plenty of skills to learn that also bring replayability to the game, like playing as a thief, bard or just some bully that intimidates his way through the quests. The visuals in Kingdom Come are phenomenal especially the environment. Weapons, clothing, combat techniques and architecture were rebuilt with the help of historians and architects. I honestly think this game is still one of the best looking video games on the market in 2023 compared to other non-ray tracing games. Just roaming the lands and looking at the vegetation is amazing. Throughout my recent playthrough I gathered footage to show how gorgeous the world looks and ended up with way more clips than I could reasonably show at this point. The footage for this video is recorded with the official HD Texture DLC and a simple reshade preset that makes the colors a little more vibrant. The link to it is in the video description below in case you're interested. Where the graphics feel a bit outdated is when you look at character faces. There has been a lot of progress in the 3D world in terms of making realistic characters within the past years. Especially facial expressions and lip synchronization could definitely be better in a new big budget game. Also the character faces in KCD are reused quite a lot and it's weird to see the same faces throughout the game on different characters. In terms of audio, the game has a really good soundtrack and voice acting. The animations are also very good for the most part, even for today's standards. Even little things like this guy for example loading off the hay wagon seem to be carefully created, maybe even motion captured. The difficulty in making great games often lies in the consistency across different aspects. Like if you have great models and textures, your animations, audio and other parts of the game need to be on par, otherwise they stick out like a sore thumb. I think towards the end of the game the main quest quality depletes a bit and there are some run from A to B and back fetch quests and more cutscenes than actual gameplay. When it comes to the question what story they could choose for a sequel, there are several options. KCD ended on a pretty big cliffhanger, so they could just begin the next story where Deliverance ended. The downside would be that they couldn't convincingly make Henry weak at the beginning of the game and give him room to grow, which was a big appeal of Deliverance. Warhorse could also do a prequel with one of the Deliverance side characters. Like the Ushitz priest for example, that apparently had an adventurous life and battle experience. Or even Martin, the Skelet's blacksmith that also has an ominous past. Or 
And this is my guess, they will go with a completely new setting. A main complaint from the community was that the quests were pretty buggy, especially on release. I remember getting stuck twice on my first playthrough, because the main quest bugged out. And even though the game has got many updates and fixes throughout the years, it is still a little janky even today. So there is definitely room for improvement when it comes to delivering a polished product right from the start. But now to my main issue with the game, the combat. Combat in Kingdom Come Deliverance is by far the game's weakest point in my opinion, due to some fundamental design flaws. But the good things first. The developers worked together with HEMA practitioners to create believable motions and the actual combat moves look very good. It's also not easy to scale the combat in an RPG game and make Henry weak at the start and strong towards the end. So I give them credit for trying that without simply just making him deal more damage over time. Also striking the right balance between having historical accurate combat on the one hand and fun combat gameplay wise on the other hand is definitely no easy task. The one thing however that completely ruins the combat in KCD are Master Strikes. Master Strikes are performed from a defending position. So you let your enemy attack first and then you press two buttons to perform an unblockable Master Strike. This mechanic makes it so that it is never safe to attack and always better to wait for the enemy to attack and counter it with an unblockable strike. And well, you could say that one could just not use them to cheese the game, but the thing is that enemies use them. So every time you simply attack, there is always the chance your enemy counters your attack and kills you with an undefendable master strike. And it's also not like those master strikes would be hard to pull off. You simply press block and attack as soon as the green indicator appears on screen. That leads to fights where you just stare at your opponent, wait for him to attack and master strike every of his attacks and kill him without any risk of ever getting hit. Pretty boring. Another thing that is bad is the target lock on system during combat. Switching between opponents is super clunky both with the soft lock and hard lock. Yes, fighting multiple opponents should be hard, but not because you have to fight the controls. As for a sequel, I would like to see them giving up on the target lock-on system altogether. You can easily have directional attacks and parries without a lock-on system, like in Mountain Blade for example. It's not like For Honor's combat that is completely built around a target lock-on system. Lastly, they also should get rid of the slow motion during combat, which is super immersion breaking in my opinion. Kingdom Come Deliverance has official modding tools and although the game has a huge fan base, the modding scene never really took off. There are some really helpful basic mods like unlimited saving or some combat tweaks, but it never reached the levels of other popular open world RPGs. I think the main reason is that the modding tools came too late only around one and a half years after the game released. It's really important in my opinion to make use of the initial hype and release the modding tools together with the game itself. So my wishes for Kingdom Come 2 are basically a better combat system, modding tools on release and more quality control when it comes to bugs and glitches. If the quality of the rest is on par with Deliverance, I can easily see them making an even better game maybe even one of the best RPGs ever. I'm definitely rooting for them. But anyway guys, that's it for this anniversary special. Are you hyped for a sequel and what setting would you like to see? Definitely let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and make sure to subscribe to not miss out on any medieval slasher content. As always, thank you all for watching and see you soon.